do you see what I see? Well, if you're a robot with sensor systems for eyes, then maybe not. But then again, I'm not sure what our robot demographic looks like for chalk dogs. Maybe somebody should investigate that. But what if you're building a design that needs to be able to do some seeing, but doesn't require a full-blown camera and embedded vision interface? What if you just want to know if somebody is close by, if there's a light, or to recognize colors and gestures? What then? How do you give your next design the gift of limited sight, adding the ability to see, sensing light, and what light bounces off of is not an easy task? Well, without optoelectronics, that is. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Maybe you're not an expert in the world of optoelectronics. Heck, either am I. But I have one with me today. Please welcome Sammy Ahmed from Vishe. Sammy and I are discussing the what, the where, and the how of optoelectronics. We've got quite a bit of ground to cover, my friends. So let's get started. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about optoelectronics from Vishe. Hi, Sammy. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. Thanks for having me on today. Okay, so first off, we're talking about optoelectronics today. But for my audience who may not know, Sammy, what is optoelectronics all about? Optoelectronics is basically looking at light and the world around you. So here we're specifically talking about sensors that can sense the presence of something in front of it, can sense how light or how dark it is in the room, or really getting a sense of putting what the human eye would see into a product. Very cool. Okay, so how does this become part of my next design? How do I get started? Lots of people have lots of very good ideas as to how to design products in, but usually they would need a little help to really get into the nitty gritty of how the sensor would react. Sure. Looking at a data sheet is one thing, using the sensor usually another. So we do offer application notes, but even that, it's a lot of text and uh, you're not always wanting to read through. Maybe you just want to see how does this thing react. So what we offer is a sensor explorer and the sensor board with the sensor on it, which allows you to easily interface with the sensor as quickly as possible. We offer some software. Usually this ties into our prototype stage, but has also been used in, in almost pre-production testing to really see how the sensor performs. Cool. Okay. Now, what's all possible in the Sensor Explorer? What you receive with the Sensor Explorer is a interface between a PC and what board you attach to it. We've sort of had a Sensor Explorer before. It used to be called the Sensor Starter Kit. Here we were sort of taking the baby steps into the whole evaluation board concept. From the feedback we got from any customers using these boards, we had to improve some things, make it easier to use, you know, simple things like make the installer install the driver itself. I don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. Seems like a small issue, but will be something that can make or break someone using this thing. Absolutely. So we improved on that. We, we opened up the platform a bit. We gave some opportunity to attach your own measurement software to sort of see how is the power of this thing or uh, what sort of data is being transmitted. To answer your question, what's possible is you can quickly attach a sensor and see what it does. And then you can attach some further instrumentation to see how it applies to the application. Very cool. Okay. So Sammy, how does this all fit together? Walk me through the setup flow a bit. So what you would do is you would buy a sensor explorer. Okay. And also be, of course, interested in the specific product. So sure. that product will have a sensor board and you will have that as well. You would attach the sensor board to the sensor explorer via the provided connector and download a bit of software and start the software and obviously connect the sensor explorer via USB to the PC. And then with the software that you get, you start analyzing what kind of data you're getting. Maybe playing with some settings because everything that's in the application node is featured in the software module. And then to start designing this into your application, you would possibly do some reverse engineering, attach an oscilloscope, see what sort of data is being sent. Sure. See how that correlates to data that's in the data sheet or in the application node, get a feel for that, then really go along with that. 
Okay, so Sammy, what's all included with the sensor board? What kind of materials do I have access to? So when you receive a sensor board, you would usually go online and download the software module. This is just a, a zip file that you unzip and then you start an exit. There's no real installation involved there. The installation is, is done when you install the Sensor Explorer. Okay. You also get all the material of how the board is built up. So you get a bill of materials, you get how things are assembled, so you can orientate yourself on what's actually provided on the board. You'll see that sometimes we don't just provide the sensor, but also something that would help evaluate. Say we've got an RGB sensor, we might put an RGB LED on there to say, we can even drive this and you can see what the sensor does without needing any sort of extra material around you. Nice. That also ties into some other things we learned over the years with our evaluation modules is that the Sensor Explorer is a great starting point as to how to design things in, but then people will already have their own tests set up. They might even have their microcontrollers ready and just want the interface in. So with providing this extra material, you're actually able to maybe just get the board, attach it to your own microcontroller, and you have all the information provided that you need to really get programming, really. Okay, cool. And Sammy, this is what I would see when I would go to the website for more information, right? Correct. So here you see a table of all the information provided with a download link available. Perfect. All right. So can you walk me through an application in action? Sure. So this is actually where it gets fun. Here you see the typical software module and a typical sensor board provided. I've taken the 6040, which is our color sensor, but you could picture this with any of our sensors provided. Okay. So you have a set of tabs that give you specific information. You will walk through that in a second. You'll see that we provide the raw data. We provide the registers accessible and some further calculation that may be required. You'll see this in, in light sensors often that the data you get is the first step and then you would compute something from that to gain some more information. Okay. So you see in the main window, you will get raw data provided. This raw data is just when you press a measure button, it'll start measuring. There's really no, no setting you need to set or anything specific you need to do. This is really aimed at get the thing running as quickly as possible and get a sort of aha effect. Then people will start putting their hands over it. The nice thing about optics is you can dynamically change the signal. You don't have something running through a couple wires and you don't really know what's going on. You put your hand over these sensors, they will react because that's what they're meant to be doing. You will then have access to all the register settings. In this case, it's not all too much. If you have a proximity sensor, there's some, some more aspects to proximity sensing that you might want to affect. So you will have more registers that you can change, but usually it amounts to measurement speed, measurement time, and then some gain or some sort of signal changing that you would want to do to fine tune a sensor for your specific application. Okay. We then show further information in the settings tab. The settings tab will have registers that may not be as important to get the sensor up and running, but really when you're trying to use a specific feature of the component, you will go to the settings tab and see how that reacts. In a proximity sensor, it would be a threshold, for example, where you cross a specific threshold and an interrupt then gets triggered. In this case here, it's actually a calculation. So the sensor has some post-processing that is done by the software. And here you can affect how that calculation is done, which numbers are used, and really takes the effort out of having to do all of this on your own. Cool, okay. And then you come to the sort of geeky engineering slide. Anyone in marketing will sort of shut off now, but uh, <laughs> if you wanted to really see what has been set and what the hex number is in that register so that when you're writing your software and you mistyped something and you're scratching your head, what's going on here? Why is the, the sensor explorer giving me what I need and why is my thing not? Yeah. You go to this slide, you just punch in the register, you read it out, and there you go. No need to cry in front of an oscilloscope. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now, what does this board really look like? You got a schematic you can show me, Sammy? Sure. So this is a, a sort of typical schematic. You see that the boards are not super complicated. The sensor does most of the heavy lifting, and then the stuff around it will usually be something that we add not because the sensor needs it, 
but because we feel it helps a user understand the sensor. Cool. A bill of material shown here as well. Also, nothing too complicated. All of our digital sensors have a nice gritzy interface, quite a simple to use interface. Anything extra will really be, in this case, driving an LED to sort of get the light out there so you can couple back into the sensor. And the assembly plan in itself is really more of an orientation. We're not looking for people to, to make these boards themselves, or if they can, if they want. But yeah. you're really looking at, oh, I see a couple of resistors being used. What happens if I take one out? And then you orientate yourself and take it out. <laughs> Excellent. Now, a lot of IoT designs these days need a wake-up function and need not to be on all the time, right? Correct. Many IoT applications almost require that things go off because power is everything there. If you're running off a battery, if you're wanting this thing to last for a long time, then you need to save power where you can, whenever you can. Right. Here's a great example of a sensor of ours that could really be very beneficial in an application like this. So it's a long range proximity sensor called the VCNL 4200. Just in the bottom, you see the demo board that we would offer for that. It's just the sensor on the end of the demo board. Don't be afraid of the big capacitors on there. We're driving this off a USB port. So anything that goes into current will be buffered there. You will not need those in your final design. Cool. So the idea here is to wake something up and get an idea of something approaching as early as possible. So you're wanting to push this sort of typical presence detection that you would find possibly in a mobile phone where you're very close yeah. out into a bigger space so that someone sitting in front of a PC or walking up to a big TV or some sort of monitor can be detected without really having to be so close to it that he would be blinded by the screen itself. The idea is that you would monitor what a person is doing in front of some sort of electronics and either build it up in a simple fashion where you say, I'm triggering on a threshold, he's either there or not, or taking the raw data in and saying, maybe I'm going to look at the dynamics of the situation. What if someone is dormant in front of a PC? Do right. I want to shut it off then? Or maybe he'll move a bit and then you can keep it on. So both of these approaches you can evaluate with a sensor board. Cool. Okay. So you would find these in many different applications, usually for sort of wake up detection, presence detection. We do have a large customer base that tends to even help us understand our sensors sometimes with the way that they want to use it. That's the nice thing about optoelectronics. Nice. You don't need to pigeonhole a component to a certain application because people will have great ideas and you can use it for many different things. Absolutely. Okay, now a lot of engineers are also looking toward gesture solutions these days, right? Correct. I mean, to touch something or maybe even for the wow effect. That's sure. always a nice thing to put into an application. So... There are different approaches to gesture detection. Not always are they optical. There's also different optical approaches to gesture detection. Our system is really built around flexibility. You've got a VCNL 4035 X01. The X01 stands for automotive qualification in this case. This is a sensor that can drive up to three external emitters and has a detector within it. So you can place these external emitters where they need to be in your application. You'll either be putting them in a confined space because you've got a very small sensing area or you're wanting larger gestures to be made. So you're putting these further apart. We offer many different LEDs with different viewing angles. So if you're wanting to cover a wide range of space or really narrow it down to a narrow angle, the package of the LED will determine what is done there. So you see that we have a bit more fun with the sensor board in this case. We actually included some LEDs to sort of blink up at you Nice. when you're detecting the gesture. If you would turn the software module on and press measure, then there's another button on there that you'll activate the gesture algorithm. Okay. This algorithm is an external algorithm. It's not done actually on the chip. But again, that has the flexibility of you being able to make that algorithm do what you need to do rather than it having a bunch of features you don't need. Cool, okay. And then you could swipe across the sensor area and see the lights blink up at you and detect simple swipe gestures or push gestures. Excellent. So we've talked about presence sensors and gesture sensors, but what about the sensing of the light around me? Sure. So this is actually an area we have a lot of different sensors for. And this really ties down to what filters do you have on the sensor? And these filters make up what you want to detect. So okay. light is everywhere. That's the first thing. And light can be used for many different applications. Be it if you're wanting to cure something, be it if you're wanting to check your surroundings to sort of adjust 
a backlight, or if you're wanting the sense of color. Mm -hmm. It's all picking out what you need from the light, and that picking process is done by the filter. So in this case, the VEML 6040 is an RGB sensor, which you can see even on the component, if you would look at it with a microscope, you can see the, the checkered red, green, and blue squares which show you where the filters are being applied. Nice. By being able to detect these different peak wavelengths of light, you can either use it to calculate the CCT, so how warm or cold is the light, or if you were to flash a light at an object, see what reflects back, you could actually use it to detect the color of this object. So the really main application so far has been the sort of other white balance camera. There you're looking at just giving the, the camera some more information as to what it may have missed in the picture to sort of clean the picture and make it more realistic. Sure. You can also use it for just simple ambient light detection as well. You've got the green channel there, so you can check how bright it is in the surroundings. There's many different applications you can use such light sensors for. In our portfolio, we have various sensors for specific sections of the light, I would say. Uh -huh. Ambient light sensors would usually be extremely accurate. Usually you're putting these ambient light sensors behind very dark glasses. So you're wanting to detect what little light comes through and still make sense of what that means for the application. Multi-bandwidth sensors for really detecting what kind of light source am I looking at. Okay, Sammy. So in terms of demo boards, what do you guys have for me? With every digital sensor that we bring to market, we will offer a demo board. Here's a list of what we offer at the moment, but this list will expand with each new sensor that we release. The typical way to go about this is to get the board, obviously have the sensor explorer. You don't need to rebuy the sensor explorer every time because nice. it's compatible with every board. You should get an application note to get a general idea of what the software module is telling you. Then you just go with designing the part in. Excellent. Okay, so if I want more information, where should I go? A great place to go for more information and generally get a gist of how, really how much fun optical sensors can be and where they can be used. Cool. Is vishayopto.com. So this is a blog site where we post information about different applications of our sensors and other optoelectronic products and really tell a story of, of what it is that these sensors do. So you can actually register to the site as well to get up-to-date information on what, what new posts come in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Sammy. This was super cool. Great. Thanks for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about Opto Electronics from Fishay. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal, can't miss it, right across the top, or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.